Good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindi News Analysis by Shankar IAS Academy. The list of articles which has been chosen for today's analysis along with the page numbers of Chennai, Bengaluru, Delhi and Thiruvananthapuram editions are provided here. The link for the handwritten notes in the PDF format and the time stamping for the displayed articles is provided in the description box below. And for the benefit of smartphone users, the time stamping for the articles has also been provided in the comment section. Let's move on to the first article for the day. This news article is an editorial about Niti Aayog. The discussion will be relevant in main syllabus under GS paper 2 in the area functions and responsibilities of the union and the states, issues and challenges pertaining to the federal structure, devolution of powers and finances up to local levels and challenges therein. Then in uh, structure, organization and functioning of the departments of the government, then also in important aspects of governance, transparency and accountability. If you see the name of the editorial it says, is Niti Ayo old wine in a new bottle? The old wine in a new bottle means a change or innovation which is applied or added to an established or long-standing organization, system or method. So, why the author has given such a name? This is because as we know, Niti Ayo has replaced the erstwhile planning commission. The Niti Ayo was established in the year 2015. It is one of Indian democracy's youngest institutions. The Prime Minister is the chairperson. Niti Aayog is the premier policy think tank of the government of India, which provides both directional and policy inputs. It has been entrusted with the mandate of reimagining the development agenda of India by dismantling the old style of central planning. Because as the Indian economy rapidly integrated with the global economy, there were many contradictions which arose between central planning and increasing private capital flows. So, the Niti Ayo was mandated to foster cooperative federalism. This is to evolve a national consensus on developmental goals, then to redefine the reforms agenda, then to act as a platform for resolution of cross-sectoral issues between centre and state governments, then capacity building and finally to act as a knowledge and innovation hub. Whereas Niti Aayog's precursor that is the planning commission was established in the year 1950 by government of India resolution. The prime minister was the chairperson. The initial mandate of the planning commission was to establish heavy industries through public investment as a means for achieving rapid industrialization. Then the functions uh, assigned to the planning commission were to assess and allocate plant resources, formulate plans and programs for area development, then determining the implementation methodology, then to identify the resource constraints and finally appraise and adjust implementation. The planning commission from 1950 to 2014 formulated 12 five-year plans, but an internal evolution in the uh, government revealed that planning commission was witnessing policy fatigue that is there was a lack of energy and motivation in the policy framing. The assessment identified some problems like the collapse of public investment while the subsidies were rising. Uh, there was a huge demand on public resources from the right to education act and from the uh, national rural employment guarantee act and there was a poorly targeted public distribution system also. Further, there were uh, difficulties in releasing land for public housing and other public projects. All these necessitated the structural changes in central planning process. So, a new institutional framework was needed. So, Niti Aayog was the change in focus from central planning to cooperative federalism. Even the Prime Minister said that through the Niti Aayog, India will move away from the one size fits all approach and it will forge a better match between the schemes and needs of states. Eventually, the abolition of planning commission and uh, replacing it with the uh, Niti Aayog is a major reform. And also the reform is consistent with the insights of previous prime ministers. The author states even the predecessors of the current prime minister like uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh and Atal Bihari Vajpayee faced similar challenges which were a large economic, social, political and global challenges. The author gives certain examples for this. Like uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee was presented with a nine point plan to increase the Indian economy's growth 
to 9% by a global think tank. But uh, watch by highlighted that many stakeholders must be involved in the implementation of a plan because India is a large diversified and democratic country. The stakeholders include the states, the private sector, civil society and even the political opposition. Therefore, the author states that it is not good enough to have a plan, but there must also be a strategy for the cooperative implementation of that plan. Look, plan is just the steps, but strategy gives the reasons. Plan is how it will be done and strategy is why it should be done. Then Dr. Manmohan Singh during his tenure also declared that reform of the planning commission was a long overdue. That is, it is already delayed. So, at that time, an intensive exercise for the reform was undertaken, in which many stakeholders were consulted. International practices were examined, then an outline was drawn for the reformed institution. Dr. Singh noted that the reformed institution should have a capability for systems reform rather than making of five-year plans and it should have the power of persuasion with the states without providing budgets. This is because a commission which was chaired by uh, C. Rangarajan who was the chairman of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council at that time examined budgetary processes, divisions of responsibilities between the finance ministry and the planning commission etc. Where the commission concluded that the budgetary responsibility must be concentrated in the finance ministry. So, it was no longer desirable for the planning commission to have powers for financial provisions. This decision worried some people. They were confused about how the planning commission would persuade the states to act according to the commission's decisions if the commission cannot provide budgetary allocation. But in contrast, the chief ministers of the states said that planning commission must improve its ability to understand the state's need and should develop ideas that the states would want to adopt willingly and solely not based on the money. So, the author says the reformation of a planning commission into Niti Aayog was not surprising. The author adds, even though Niti Aayog was created with a wide vision, if you see after the four years of its constitution, the country's economy has not performed up to the high expectations. Like still the uh, Indian government is struggling to make good plans and strategies to address its complex challenges. The complex challenges include the need to increase employment and incomes, uh, then reviving investments and growth, then untangling or solving the problems and crisis in the financial sector, then uh, navigating through the dull international trade, then solving uh, the perennial problems of uh, poor education and health and also solving the growing problems of environmental pollution and water scarcity. The author says among these challenges, India has a long way to go to achieve economic and social inclusion and also restoring the environmental sustainability. Now, these problems are complex because they are all interrelated. Just fixing the one part alone can make matters worse. Like for example, providing skills to millions of youth before there are enough employment opportunities is a problem. This shows that Niti Aayog has not performed well in these four years. So, the performance of the Niti Aayog is under scrutiny and this has led to the phase where uh, many people are nostalgically recalling the planning commission. Nostalgically recalling means sentimentally remembering. In the starting, we saw many drawbacks of the planning commission, but still some are sentimentally remembering it. This is happening because a deep concern has aroused that Niti Aayog has lost its integrity as an independent institution to guide the government. The author says that it has become a mouthpiece of the government, that is, it is speaking on behalf of the government and has become just an implementer of the government's projects. But many insist that Niti Aayog must have the ability to independently evaluate the government's programs at the center and in the states. Some also say that the Niti Aayog charter is a good starting point for a new journey in transforming the gov governance of the Indian economy. So, an open-minded review of what Niti Aayog has achieved so far should be scrutinized and whether the new role is 
same as described in its charter like being a catalyst of change should also be scrutinized and then it should be assessed whether niti ayog has transformed its capabilities sufficiently to become an effective systems reformer and persuader of stakeholders this is to make sure whether it has really just remained an announcer of multi year goals and uh, manager of government projects the author says that Niti Aayog cannot function on the traditional approach, like doing evaluations after the plan is completed. Rather, it should have a transformational approach to planning and implementation that the 21st century India needs. It should do evaluations and course corrections in the middle of action. Then it requires new methods. to speed up its organizational learning among stakeholders in the system organizational learning is the process of creating retaining and transferring knowledge within an organization because the stakeholders must make plans together and implement them together and this can be achieved only through organizational learning then it should stop implementing the old ideas of budget controls and export solutions because this will not transform india it should rather adopt new methods of cooperative learning and cooperative implementation by stakeholders further the author says that the stakeholders should not be controlled by any central body of technical experts with political or budgetary authority over them the author concludes that the debate about niti ayog's efficacy must focus on whether or not it is performing its new role and what progress it has made in acquiring capabilities to perform these roles rather than discussing the need for a planning commission with this we have come to the end of this analysis the displayed mains question will be discussed in the last session moving on to the next article which is an editorial about the india nigeria relations the article discussion will be helpful in prelim syllabus under the area current events of national and international importance the discussion will also be helpful in mains in general studies paper 2 under the area international relations especially under bilateral agreements involving india and affecting indian interests first let us see some geographical facts about nigeria nigeria is a country in the african continent it is located in the west african part of the african continent if you look in the world map you could see that the country is not so far from equator and also not so far from the prime meridian so this could be used as an interesting option to trick you and to confuse you during the exam so be clear that both equator and prime meridian does not pass through nigeria also know that prime meridian is the special longitudinal line called as zero degree line of longitude which is helpful in measuring the 180 degrees to the east and 180 degrees to the west from this zero degree line in the earth one another thing which you should remember is there is one country that is situated immediately to the north of nigeria the name of the country is niger so don't think nigeria and niger are same both are uh, different countries that are neighbors to each other in the news article you could find a name as lagos lagos is a city in nigeria and the capital of nigeria is abuja let's come to the editorial news article now the article states that the prime minister of india and the president of nigeria has started their second terms as the leaders of both countries and this has happened very recently and that too on dates next to each other Indian prime minister swore oath on May 30 whereas the Nigerian president swore oath only a day before that is on May 29 2019 next if you note the challenges faced by both the leaders during their first term were uncannily or surprisingly similar the similar set of challenges faced by them in, uh, during their first tenure include security against terrorism know that uh, according to global terrorism index of 2018 India is the seventh worst affected country because of terrorism in the world and Nigeria is the third worst affected country because of terrorism in the world then next challenge is monetary and fiscal problems then the communal and sectarian division among the masses in the country in India this division is seen predominantly between Hindus and Muslims and in Nigeria it is seen between Christians and Muslims then another challenge is chronic unemployment rampant uh, corruption rural distress and fragile or lack of stability in the neighborhood countries 
by lack of stability we mean a lack of stability of democratic governments in completing a full term of government sometimes sometimes this also means frequent changes in top leadership of the government that was unexpected or accidental or by overthrowing the leadership by violence by military or by protests or by democratic actions the author says nigeria is important to india for three reasons one nigeria is the most populated country in africa two it is also the largest economy in africa third it is also the sixth largest oil exporter in the world thus simply uh, speaking nigeria is important for india for human resources for market for economy for oil in africa india's largest uh, trading partner is nigeria if you take on a global scale it is 19th largest trading partner of india nigeria is a sizable market for indian manufactured exports in areas such as machinery vehicles pharmaceutical products textile items iron and steel articles and plastics if you ask on a global scale who is the largest uh, trading partner for nigeria it is india india is nigeria's largest trading partner the author says this is mainly because of oil imports from the country since india is the largest buyer of crude oil from nigeria one positive factor in the bilateral trade between india and nigeria is that even though uh, there was a stagnancy in india's global exports the exports to nigeria has increased by 27% last year the overall bilateral trade is currently four times in favor of nigeria this is because nigeria exports to india which is four times the value of indian exports to nigeria when we say bilateral trade we mean trade between by countries that is trade between two countries here by means two indian investments in nigeria values at around 15 billion us dollars and an additional 5 us dollars worth investment is in various levels of planning there are around 180 indian companies operating in nigeria mainly in sectors such as pharmaceuticals steel power retailing fast moving consumer goods and skilling by fast moving consumer goods we mean the products that sell quickly at a relatively low cost and have a short shelf life because of high consumer demand and hence they come into non durable category they are mostly perishable in nature best example could be a dairy product such as milk note that these goods have low profit margins there are around uh, 50000 indians residing in nigeria most of them are professionals such as engineers accountants bankers trainers and healthcare experts now coming to the issue between uh, both the countries in the bilateral ties there is very less or scant or uh, minimal government support the author states that whatever we have seen above are substantive nature or important part of india nigeria ties and these achievements are possible mainly because of individual efforts like uh, business individuals then uh, stricter visa procedures lack of direct air connectivity between india and nigeria are hampering the people to people ties and also business to business ties these are also serious and as these have uh, potential to affect the indian exports to the nation note that india exports just 25% of what china exports to nigeria despite the export potential of nigeria in the area such as upstream hydrocarbons agriculture healthcare and skilling here uh, upstream hydrocarbon means the exploration and production of hydrocarbons while the downstream sector deals with the process of refining the author says that the political relations between both the countries are not regular this is because indian prime minister visited nigeria in 1962 then it took uh, almost 45 years for the next indian prime minister to visit nigeria this is the second visit by indian prime minister to nigeria which happened only in 2007 after 1962 after 2007 no visit was made by an indian prime minister to nigeria in 2016 indian president visited nigeria and the nigerian president visited india as the third india african uh, su- forum summit was held in new delhi in the year 2015 the defense cooperation between both the countries is mostly episodic that is not happening frequently and the defense cooperation is mostly related to training 
then as suggestions the author suggests that the leaders of both the countries should give a push to the bilateral ties as soon as possible this may happen uh, through a meeting or summit between them at the earliest this is more important at least in the scenario of oil commodity becoming sellers market when we say sellers market we mean the price determination leverage is with the seller the countries should also evolve a multi pronged strategy to take advantage of mutual economic complementary roles uh, in the sectors of hydrocarbons infrastructure institution building defense and agriculture the author says that a joint economic commission comprising the members of india and nigeria happened in 2011 but no follow up session of the meeting was conducted later therefore the author calls for an immediate follow up session of the joint commission then the author calls for relaxation of visa norms from the indian side to facilitate thousands of nigerians to come to india to avail the medical and educational facilities and for the promotion of better people to people ties the author also calls for facilitating the direct air connectivity between india and nigeria then facilitation in banking and shipping for better business to business contact between both the countries if all these suggestions and issues are handled skillfully and swiftly and with political will then both the countries will be able to tap the economic potential that is untapped for decades with this we have come to the end of this discussion the displayed mains question will be discussed in the last session moving on to the next news article which is about the aviation sector the analysis of this news article will be relevant in your prelims syllabus under current events of international importance and also under general issues on climate change the statistics provided in this news article can be used in any of your mains answer related to emissions from aviation sector so it will be relevant in your gs paper 3 under environmental pollution and degradation also the overall theme of this news article is that aviation sector is responsible for higher carbon dioxide emissions and subsequent global warming the news tells that the climate activists are convincing traveler to boycott air travel this is because of the concerns of higher carbon dioxide emissions if you see a sweden based school girl and campaigner greta thunberg is spearheading or leading the trains over planes movement she has also created a buzzword or a popular term called flight scam in swedish language it is called flight shame in english it has become very popular in sweden which is one of the scandinavian country the other scandinavian countries are Norway, Denmark, Finland and Iceland. The chief executive of the International Air Transport Association has also admitted that the aviation sector is under considerable pressure due to the concerns over higher carbon dioxide emissions. According to the European Environment Agency, the air transport emits 285 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer for one passenger. The road transport emits 158 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer for one passenger but the rail transport emits only 14 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer for one passenger so we can see that air transport emits carbon dioxide at least more than 20 times higher than that of rail transport therefore you can say that this is the reason the swedish activist is leading the trains over planes movement also the climate uh, activists are uh, calling for boycott of air travel then a green tax on aviation industry is also being suggested by climate activists a green tax or environmental tax is a tax that is imposed on environmental pollutants or on goods whose repeated use contributes to pollution this is imposed to limit the use of such goods here also know that european environment agency is an agency of the european union This agency provides targeted and reliable environmental information to policy makers and the public. Now under pressure from frequent flyers who are alarmed over climate change, the news article tells that the aviation sector is focusing on reducing the carbon emissions. But the technology that is required to reduce its carbon emissions is still not available. The news article also states that the aviation sector has committed to improve the fuel efficiency by 1.5% per year from 2009 to 2020 also the aviation industry is stabilizing its carbon dioxide emissions it is aiming to reduce carbon dioxide emissions to 
50 percent by the year 2050 compared to the 2005 levels. Also, the companies are relying on a new generation of less polluting planes with updated uh, engines, aerodynamic modifications and fittings that weigh less. However, an industry analyst notes that all these technological advances to cut emissions are tough to implement quickly due to the nature of the industry. If you see, the aviation industry is already affected by high operating costs and this move may further increase this cost. But there is also a complaint over the aviation sector that it is underestimating its environmental impact. The International Civil Aviation Organization estimates that air transport is responsible only for 2% of global carbon dioxide emissions and states that it is roughly equivalent to the overall emissions of Germany. Here know that the International Civil Aviation Organization is a specialized agency of United Nations. It was established in 1944 to manage the administration and governance of the Convention on International Civil Aviation. Also, India is a member of International Civil Aviation Organization. But the uh, Climate Action Network notes that the aircraft also emits particles such as nitrogen oxides. These nitrogen oxides can trap heat at high altitudes. This means the industry is responsible for 5% of global warming. So, we can clearly see that the aviation sector is underestimating its environmental impact. Here know that the Climate Action Network is a worldwide network of over 1300 non-governmental organizations which has presence in more than 120 countries. This network aims to promote government and individual action to limit human induced climate change to ecologically sustainable levels. If you see, even the International Air Transport Association chief is lobbying or persuading heavily against a green tax on aviation. This persuasion is backed by several countries including the Netherlands. Next, let us see about the International Air Transport Association in brief. IATA or International Air Transport Association is the trade association for the world's airlines representing some 290 airlines which amount to 82 percent of total air traffic. This association support many areas of aviation activity and also help in formulating industry policy on critical aviation issues. With this we have come to the end of this analysis. The display prelims question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next article which is about the death of male tiger in the Sariska tiger reserve. This article discussion will be helpful in the prelim syllabus under the area current events of national importance then under general issues on environmental ecology. The discussion will also be helpful in mains under general studies paper 3 under the heading environment particularly under area conservation. Two months ago a male tiger was shifted from Ranthambore National Park to Sariska Tiger Reserve. The Ranthambore National Park is located in the Savai Madhopur district of southeastern Rajasthan. Sariska Tiger Reserve is located in Alwar district of Rajasthan. This was done as a part of Tiger Translocation Project. There are three tiger reserves in the state of Rajasthan. They are uh, one Sariska Tiger Reserve, two Ranthambo Tiger Reserve and the recently declared Mukandra Hills Tiger Reserve. Sariska Tiger Reserve and uh, Ranthambo Tiger Reserve were declared in 1970s. The Mukandra Hills Tiger Reserve was announced as Tiger Reserve in the period 2013-14. to 14. In terms of uh, total area of uh, Tiger Reserve, Ranthambo Tiger Reserve is the largest in the state of Rajasthan. Earlier, the first interstate tiger translocation project in our country was uh, started in 2018. This was done by translocating two tigers from Kanha National Park in the state of Madhya Pradesh to uh, Satkosia Tiger Reserve in the state of Odisha. In this one, one tiger, translocated tiger was founded while one translocated tiger became an man eater. Therefore, the translocation project was temporarily stopped. In April 2019, a tiger translocated from Ranthambo National Park to Sariska Tiger Reserve. This is a intrastate translocation or inter-district translocation within a state. This translocated male tiger has died. 
the reason for the death of the tiger will be identified after the post mortem examination this has raised several questions on the translocation of tigers know that now uh, there are only three male tigers in sariska tiger reserve and eight tigresses the purpose of translocation of tigers is to increase tiger population in india and to allocate territory for them to live freely as a part of conservation efforts usually after translocation according to the protocol adopted by the national tiger conservation authority which is based on the iucn guidelines the translocation has to be accepted by the local community there should be an evaluation of impact of relocation this shall be done by a team of experts from the wildlife institute of india forest department of the state a qualified veterinarian and a qualified wildlife biologist should evaluate the socio economic impact of the translocation on the people in the area this should be done to ensure long term protection of the reintroduced population from hunting loss or uh, alteration of habitat and other human factors we do not know whether this evaluation or protocol was followed after the introduction of the tiger into the sariska tiger reserve in 2004 because of poaching sariska became tigerless it is only by reintroduction of tigers in the reserve and by diligent monitoring the tiger population are existing in the sariska tigerism nowadays keep these examples in mind in case you need to highlight the failures of conservation efforts or for questions related to translocation of tigers for conservation now also know that the national tiger conservation authority is a statutory body established by the statute wildlife protection act of 1972 under the section 38 capital l the chairperson of this authority is the ministry of environment forest and climate change with this we have come to the end of this article discussion the displayed prelims question will be discussed in the last session moving on to the last article for the day which is about the risks involved in genetic mutation or gene editing this article discussion will be relevant in prelim syllabus under the area current events of national and international importance and also under general science the discussion will also be relevant in your mains preparation in general studies paper 3 under science and technology developments and their effects in everyday life before going into the discussion you should know about gene editing and very recently on 4th june we have done a detailed analysis on gene editing so please have a look at it now coming to today's analysis last year a chinese scientist reportedly edited the genes of twin babies this was done by the scientist reportedly to protect against the hiv virus recently a research study was conducted by scientists from university of california about whether just this uh, gene editing could have any negative effect on human beings they concluded that the twins whose genes were edited may die early that is between the age of 41 to 78 they have said this as they have uh, concluded that the gene edited babies are associated with 21% increase in mortality in later life 21% increase in mortality means 21% increase in chances of death they have found that people who have two mutated copies of CCR5 gene has a significantly higher death rate between the ages of 41 and 78 this rate is higher than those with single mutated copy of the ccr5 gene this ccr5 gene is important because it is this gene that is responsible for allowing hiv virus into the human body the ccr5 gene has a protein that allows hiv virus to enter and infect the human cells so if this ccr5 gene is mutated then the humans would become resistant to hiv while we learned that ccr5 allows the human immunodeficiency virus that is the hiv virus we should also know that studies have found that the same ccr5 gene protect human beings from the entry of the fatal west nile virus now to completely know about this west nile virus please visit our video on 22nd may 2019 we have already done a detailed analysis on this The link for gene editing video and the link for the West Nile viral fever video is given in the description box. Now also note that there are risks such as reduced life span as a result of gene editing. This news can be cited as an example in your mains exam answer writing. With this we have come to the end of article analysis session. 
moving on to the last session for the day that is the practice questions discussion session if you look at the first question it is about the international civil aviation organization in this if you see the first statement it is correct because international civil aviation organization is a specialized agency of united nations and it was established in the year 1944 to manage the administration and governance of the convention on international civil aviation and also know that india is a member of international civil aviation organization so this makes the second statement as the correct statement now if you look at the second question it is about the national tiger conservation authority during our uh, discussion we discussed that the national tiger conservation authority is a statutory body which is established by wildlife protection act of 1972 under section 38 capital l of this act and this uh, section 38 l deals with the authority so here the first statement is correct now if you come to the second statement see the chairman of national board of wildlife is the prime minister the vice chairperson of national board of wildlife is the minister who is in charge of environment forest and climate change we saw that chairman of a national tiger conservation authority is also the minister of environment forest and climate change therefore the vice chairperson of national board of wildlife is also the chairman for the national tiger conservation authority here the question asks for uh, the correct statements statement 1 is also correct and statement 2 is also correct so the correct answer to this question is option c both 1 and 2 let us see one mains question based on gs paper 2 the vision strategy and actions of niti ayog are a catalyst of change in a complex federal and socio economic system of india discuss for answering this question for the first part the vision strategy and actions mention the vision of niti ayog which we discussed as mandate during the session then you can add what are the problems in the niti ayog like for the past 4 years we have not seen a proper economic growth because the question says discuss when the question asks us to discuss a question you can uh, answer either in favor of the given sentence or argument or even against it but if you see our today's discussion was more towards the negative aspects of niti ayog so you can build your answer based on that but if you want to answer the question in favor then you can use the example of planning commission and say the limitations of planning commission and then add that niti ayog addresses these limitations for example uh, now niti ayog functions as a cooperative federalism which was lacking in planning commission but always try to substantiate that is try to prove the fact in whichever points you give for answer don't give vague points now let us see another mains question based on gs paper 2 india is the largest trading partner of the africa's largest economy discuss the common issues and challenges between the two nations and suggest joint measures in order to realize the potential between the two countries this question you can answer only if you know which country is the largest economy in africa some questions may come like this in examination we saw that Nigeria is the largest economy in Africa and it is also the largest in terms of population in Africa. You may start with a brief introduction about the given statement that India is the largest trading partner of Nigeria. You say that and mention India is the largest importer of crude oil from Nigeria. Then you can say that in Africa the largest trade partner of India is Nigeria. Other than oil a uh, trade predominantly happen in the export of manufactured products from india in the areas of uh, machinery vehicle pharmaceutical products textile items iron and steel articles and plastics the common issues here uh, what we have uh, discuss uh, we have to discuss is with respect to trade though there may be many issues between both the countries some of the common issues and challenges are lack of direct air connectivity between india and nigeria because this will directly affect the trade volume movement then lack of facilitating agreements in the area of shipping and banking and this has been an issue and this is found to have influence on the business to business contact between countries then you can also mention about the potential trade areas for india and nigeria like uh, upstream hydrocarbons agriculture healthcare and skilling then also mention as joint measures 
there shall be frequent political visits between both the countries as better political relations could result in to better economic relations. Then a joint multi-pronged strategy must be released to realize the mutually complementary beneficial, uh, beneficial opportunities. Then right now India is having significant trade deficit with Nigeria. Therefore, care should be given in framing the trade terms to adequately benefit India also. All these points, try to mention all these points. With this, we have come to the end of today's analysis. If you like the video, don't forget to like, comment and share and do subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel for more updates in UPSC Civil Service Examination preparation.